Hi there, my name is Dr. Hannah Strom and I'm a pelvic floor physical therapist in Woodbury, Minnesota. I'm going to be talking about the anatomy of your pelvic floor and the various roles and functions of your pelvic floor muscles. So to start, your pelvic floor is a group of muscle that sits at the very base of your pelvis and provides support for your pelvic organs, for the bones of your pelvis, as well as play various bowel, bladder, and sexual functions. I'm going to be using this pelvis to explain the anatomy in 3D. In the front of your pelvis, you have your pubic bones. On the side, we have our hip bones or iliac bones. At the back sits your sacrum or co sacrum and coccyx or tailbone. And then at the bottom, we have our sit bones as well as again that tailbone towards the back. And everything in between those bony structures, we have this group of muscle called your pelvic floor. So your pelvic floor sits like a sling or a hammock all the way from the pubic bone in the front to the tailbone in the back, as well as your two sit bones. You can see that these muscles go along the rim of the pubic bones, surround the vaginal opening, and the urethra, as well as surround the anal opening or a muscle called the anal sphincter. When these muscles are functioning, they contract in order to hold back urine or feces. They also need to relax in order to empty our, bl our bladder and empty our bowels. They also play a role in sexual health by contracting and relaxing to provide sexual satisfaction, as well as relax in order to allow for penetrative activity here around that vaginal opening. Now, these muscles also play an important role during vaginal childbirth. In order to allow baby's passage through the vagina and through the bony pelvis, these pelvic floor muscles need to stretch in order to accommodate baby's passage through the vagina and pelvis. Sometimes during that process, the perineum or the pelvic floor muscles here might tear. We can have anywhere from a grade one to a grade four tear, sometimes just a small tear through these, this uh, initial layer of muscle or all the way down through the anal sphincter. If we flip the pelvis over, we can see that we have this big um, opening here or the bowl of the pelvis and this is where our pelvic organs sit. So behind the pubic bone, we have our bladder, which is a muscular structure that can expand as urine enters and relaxes and contracts as we empty our bladder. Behind the bladder sits our vaginal canal as well as the uterus. And behind the vagina sits the rectum that holds stool. If we remove all of those pelvic organs, you'll see a deeper layer of pelvic floor muscle here that sits also like a hammock from the, the pubic bone in the front all the way to the tailbone in the back. These deeper layer of muscles can contract and relax in order to support our pelvic organs, to support bowel, bladder, and sexual function, and provide stability for the bones and the joints of the pelvis. These different muscles are broken up into various names, but to keep it simple, the deeper muscle is typically referred to as the levator ani muscle group. Once again, you can see that we have superficial muscle, deeper pelvic floor muscles, and it's important that these muscles are both strong and can contract and create a muscular um, contraction, as well as relax in order to empty our bowels, bladder, or perform sexual functions. Sometimes people may have pelvic floor muscles that are weak, and we may train patients on how to do pelvic floor strengthening. Some people also have pelvic floor muscles that are too tight, they may have tenderness in these muscles or other pain-related dysfunctions. And in that case, we would teach patients how to appropriately relax and downtrain those pelvic floor muscles. 
So if you have any further questions, please refer to the information in the website as there are various articles and other places that you can gather more information. Thank you.